Oh dear. Uh, I'm John Furrow here with SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. You're here at the home of big data. And we are watching the Cloudera intern party where Cloudera is hosting the Silicon Valley elite interns from the computer science and programs from around the world. Uh, I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com. Hello, everybody. I'm here at Cloudera, our headquarters at SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. And, um, you know, I'm lucky to hang out at Cloudera because uh, Cloudera is, uh, is the kind of company where all the alpha geeks are out here partying and hanging out, coding away for Apache Hadoop the leading, the hottest open source project on the planet. And Cloudera has an open house tonight where they're just basically inviting all the interns who are summer interning from all around the, the, the world, in computer science from Brown University to Washington State. And we're here with Andrew Mack. Yes, sir. Okay, we're, okay so step up to the microphone a little bit and okay. uh, let's, uh, let's hear from you. So what's going on with you? What's your story? My story. Um, basically, I am a student at the University of Washington. I'm a comparative history of ideas major. Um, Sorry about that, hold on a second, we're make, fixing the camera. I'm a comparative history ideas major in, uh, at the University of Washington. I did two years of college while I was in high school, um, so I'm in my senior year right now. Um, yes sir, yes sir. Um, and basically, uh, I hounded uh, the WePay sales director um, probably four times until he yeah. gave me a job. I came down here and I live uh, right across the street from Cloudera actually. Um, doing good things at. So tell the pay. people what's going on. You, they can't see here because the screen. We'll give them a little, a little pan around with the camera. Yeah. So give folks the, the uh, a vibe on what you're seeing here. What's around going on around you? It's crazy. So we got about four or five TVs or projectors uh, set up. All the interns from all over the world and Silicon Valley are coming in to just kind of mix and mingle, uh, learn about each other's companies, doing their thing. Um, we got ping pong going on behind me. Uh, a couple more we pay interns coming in. Uh, it's crazy. There's food, popcorn. Uh, I don't know if they're serving beer. I don't know if everyone's uh, of age yet, but uh, we'll see. Uh, John fixing the cameras. <laughs> yeah, I mean people are hanging out. Let's go. Let's take a look at that. Uh, let's take a look at that. At what's going on? So that's the. We got some video games all over. So Cloud Era brought in all the stops. They brought in all the cameras. TVs, got the Silicon Angle studio here. What do you think of this little hacking studio I got here? Yeah, it's it's amazing. I yeah. can't believe you just set it up and had to move everything, but it, it's beautiful. Um, I got four cameras. <laughs> We're gonna go to camera three. They're doing a little uh, Wii action there. All right, so tell us about yourself, Andrew. What's your story? I mean, what are you studying? You're not studying computer science, but you're studying something right. a more interesting. Right. Well, not more interesting, but something similarly interesting yeah. around science. What do you tell us about what you're studying? Uh, comparative history of, of ideas is actually an exclusive major to the University of Washington. It's only been around for 30 years. Uh, basically, it's an interdisciplinary program. Um, we borrow from anthropology, philosophy, law, technology, biology, physics, um, you name it, and try to basically get students to think openly, think critically, um, and become agents of their own education and their own life. Uh, so does that kind of answer your question, John? Yeah, so, so why, why, what's your interest in uh, with Cloudera? Why are you coming here? Because you obviously got invited, saw the list. What's going on? Absolutely. Well, uh, I just want to learn more about what they do, and it's always good to network in Silicon Valley. You never know who you might meet, uh, like people like John. Uh, basically, uh, I'm a sales intern, too, so I just wanted to spread the word about WePay. Um, that being said, if anybody wants to send bills, accept donations, sell tickets for events, or even create your online store, um, call me up. My name is Andrew Mack, and my number is 425-750-0728, and I'll get you set up with a demo. What about uh, your Twitter handle? Would you, do you want to give that out? Yeah, it's away? at Mac, Andrew Mack, um, so M-A-K, Andrew M-A-K. So happy. tell us, who do you know from the Cloudera scene? Do you hang out? Do you know anyone by name? Famous uh, developers here? Do you know anybody that recognize any of their names? I don't know anyone here, actually. That's kind of why I came. I was uh, invited by another intern who was invited. So Who's I'm just that? Gonna, um, th his name is Elliot Spellman. So is he here? Uh, not right now. He's coming later. Fashionably cool. late. So. Cool. Yeah, no, no, there's no beer here. So, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, right? Not, not everyone is uh, available in... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's under age, and everyone's under age. How yeah. old are you? I'm 19, actually. 19. Just turned 19. Do you know any? Do you, any, do you know any code at all? Uh, I'm starting to learn Ruby, actually. Yeah, I'm working with it a little bit, but uh, I need to get better at it. All right, where are you from originally? Uh, I've been to Seattle all my life. So, yeah. yeah. What do you think of the tech scene, Silicon Valley? Um, 
it's amazing. You meet all kinds of people. I just saw Craig from Craigslist uh, a week ago. I went to, let's see, I went to Facebook. I've been to Cloudera. I've been to let's, Palantir. Um, so great people, great companies. Um, cool. Always interesting conversation. Okay, well, anything you want to shout out to anyone out there? You want to say hello? You're, uh, how many people are watching right now? We'll just give you a little, uh, <laughs> a little count here. You only got... Uh, oops, I don't even have the count on it. Yeah, how many users do you have, John? So what's your, impre what's, your, what's, your, what's your vision of the future, technology? Vision of the future? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what's your uh, dream? What do you think is going to happen with technology? Technology? I mean, you're I young, you've got your fresh right, eyes. Right. Tell us what's going on. I, I hope technology just makes the life easier for everyone, you know? Um, I'm seeing, I'm seeing like, uh, what do, how do I say it? Everything is being made a lot easier. You know, we're taking the kind of, uh, limitations of of uh, technology or the difficulty of technology out of the process. I was just on a call today and I was helping a 65 year old woman set up an online store so that she could accept credit and debit card payments as well as bank account transfers. And um, you know, prior to to like our site, we weren't able to do something like that. So um, it's just amazing how easy um, it is to do things and to connect with other people using technology. And I hope it, I hope it spreads more. Um, Kind of well, I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm, I could I could be your parent here, but you know, I, in the day where I grew up, cable TV was the big thing when I was like uh, 15 years old. Yeah. MTV. Uh -huh. Now the internet's pervasive. You got Netflix. You got BitTorrent. Yeah. You got Pirate Bay. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you got everything out there. What you know? What's gonna? I mean, the world's gonna be disrupted, right? I mean. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, do you read the paper? Uh, no, actually, everything's on my iPad. Everything's online. Everything's going to be on Silicon Angle, right? Yeah. Um, so it it really is turning digital. Um, we kind of have to follow that curve or that that trend uh, if we want to stay ahead of the do game. Do you game so. at all? You're a gamer. You play Xbox. Do you any gaming at all? Um, no, I I do a little bit of StarCraft. Uh, I have a friend um, who's who's I think he's a Masters League StarCraft player, so he's into that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe some Super Smash Bros. So might catch on to one of these projectors and let me ask you a question on. is school boring for you i mean with all the data on the web yeah i mean you go to classes you pay yeah. the money mm -hmm. you got some professors to pull from yeah a whole new educational model going out there you bored i mean is it like man? yeah yeah i i've had that problem you know because i you know i was in business school before i went to comparative history of ideas as a major and basically should I be looking at the camera or should I be looking at you, John? I, no, sorry. just look at me. Okay, Whatever, I should, comfortable. You look good. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, but basically, uh, you know, in business school, I was learning how to write emails. And I was like, I was sitting in a room thinking about it, and I was like, I'm paying $1,000 to learn how to write emails. It's not going to work out for me. <laughs> so um, yeah. I, I'm not doing business school, but my current major is actually pretty interesting. Um, taking the time out of your life to think critically, uh, think about philosophy and what the great thinkers have done, and... Uh, how they've thought about the world at their time. Um, that's pretty interesting to me. But uh, I definitely need to keep myself busy with some entrepreneurial pursuits. Well, we know that SiliconAngle.com is the, our tagline is where computer science meets social science. So mm -hmm. it's cool that you're studying these kind of new ideas. And, yeah. and I was talking to Richard McAniff, who was uh, last mm -hmm. year at VMworld. He's the chief development officer at VMware. And cool. obviously he'd been at Microsoft, worked at Bill Gates. He Great. said his best hires uh -huh. were non-computer science. They were English really? majors and uh, social science guys. Mm -hmm. So, what, you know, creativity comes from a lot of places. Cool, cool. What qualities? Why is that? Did he give an explanation? Because um, they see the world differently and they look at different data and uh -huh. they study interactions and patterns. So, Interesting. You know, one of the things that I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm looking at right now is the, the pattern matching between social behavior and the web. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, social media, social networking is new. I mean, yeah. Facebook is only mm -hmm. like five years old. Right, I mean, six years old. Right, and what number you use? So, uh -huh. so I mean, come on, six years old. Yeah. So, it's not developed. So, yeah, definitely. The online computer science is going to have reasoning. Yeah. It's going to be some sociology to it. So yeah. that's my thesis, and mm -hmm. I'm sticking to it. Interesting. So Good you know, deal. which is why I'm doing uh, Silicon Academy, my new site that I'm launching this year, and it's going to be a, uh, a social media version of of uh, learning. Uh huh. Uh huh. Completely nonlinear. 
Okay. Completely nonlinear. So, so how is it going to work? Give me a little, you know, brief synopsis of. Uh, well, you know, you know I mean, do. the younger generation like yourself, my son's 16, right. he's Xbox gaming. Mm -hmm. I mean, the data, you're processing so much data all the time. Yeah. Um, the real physical world can be yeah. boring. Yeah. So it'll Definitely. be augmented with other tools. So augmented reality is going uh -huh. to be computer driven cool. as an aid to life. Cool. Could be for betterment. Right. For you know, all kinds of areas. Education. I see. Uh, social interactions. Awesome. So, so have, have you... Uh, have you talked to Peter Thiel yet or something like that? No. You know his 20 under 20 program? Yeah, I do yeah. know. I heard, so, I've heard of it. Yeah, he's I haven't chatted with him. I talked to Sean Parker over uh -huh. Facebook, and uh, I've met Thiel a few times, but I'm not going to grovel over to get a meeting with him. But um, yeah. you know, when he sees what we're doing with Silicon Academy, yeah, he's yeah. going to be involved. And we got a lot of people behind it already. So That'd be great. Um, we're going to build it out and build it out from a big data perspective. Uh -huh. So great. Well, hey, thanks for stopping in. Thank go mingle. You, I don't want to hog up all your time. Absolutely. Let's thanks for having me. Let's go back to the uh, McAniff interview. This is Richard McAniff from VMware, and uh, we're going to hear from him. Let's go to the Cloudera party line. Thank you, John. I got a damn Blackberry, I want the iPhone. I mean, at least in California. Yeah, but. you know, it's, it's a great question. IT, as you know, is really under a lot of pressure. Uh, they're under pressure to do more with less. And 70% of their resources are actually spent uh, on maintenance. At the same time, they're being driven to do more in terms of providing services to their uh, end users, to their business partners. So, uh, again, being driven. And I think that the world of self-service, of being able to provision as you go. We're all being conditioned very quickly. Uh, a few clicks and we're on a Twitter stream and, and that's what people want inside the enterprise as well. Two clicks deployment. A question about the future of cloud and kind of tying in the whole Wintel revolution. I mean, Intel put a processor together, right. encapsulated a lot of technology in that. No one complained. There was a lot of technical stuff under the hood. No one said, hey, they're proprietary. What's going to be that processor that everyone going, hey, it's a black box and it's going great and we're running apps on top, or kind of components. How does the cloud fit into that metaphor? So if the PC is a black box with processors, how do you see the, is the cloud, is it not directly, but metaphorically, is out of those kinds of opportunities because you've got to have proprietary technology to run scalable, great user experience devices? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's again, another very interesting question we could probably spend a long time on. Uh, you can think of the cloud in some senses as almost being a box the cloud itself is being a box, where you have many, many different blades. x86, by the way, uh, is going to drive this. And then you have software like vSphere.
right now. I run uh, SiliconAngle.com. I run Silicon Academy. And I run SiliconAngle.tv, which is uh, where I broadcast all my uh, video to. So, basically, uh, you know Jeff Adenbacher? No. Yeah, I was just interviewing this. Like, so I got three windows, camera one, camera two, five cameras. So this is just this is a video uh, set. I built this box from scratch. It has uh, my, my own spec, and we have our own software on that. It does some pretty cool shit, but I won't go into that. But this is this box here has camera one is me. Camera two is the chair. Camera three is the crowd. Camera four is the computer. Four is the computer. That actually Camera five is Richard the, Mackiniff. Uh, the automation. Now he's at the intern devices, party. So that okay. from the he's end user perspective, it just looks like I have infrastructure, uh, infrastructure. much like uh, I had infrastructure like the on the PC. And this is really what the revolution is all about: is that him. there's new infrastructure that's, not actually here, is it? that's no, that was almost the opaque at some level. I'm there's running an a rerun down here. That, uh, so I got a DDR to build on top of that infrastructure, and then there's desktop for end user on top. Back to camera three. We're here live at Cloudera's intern party. All the top interns from around Silicon Valley have come around town. I got two chumps behind me from Silic, uh, from Carnegie Mellon. What's your names? My name is Melvin. Melvin. My name is Shree. Shree. Go sit down in the hot seat from Carnegie Mellon. <laughs> well, they, you guys know how to program? Are they, they programming in Carnegie Mellon these days? Basic? You guys study basic over there? Carnegie Not Mellon? Anymore. Not anymore? No. <laughs> All right, we're going to get the Carnegie Mellon guy. Here, sit down in the hot seat, Melvin. Come on. All right, so the, the young guns. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see Melvin. There we go. Get a little camera action on Melvin. Okay, let me do a little sound check here. All right, Melvin, what's your story? Pull the microphone a little closer. Pull this. The background noise. It's directional. Good. Is that good? Yeah. It's my story. Um, from New York. I uh, just finished my junior year at Carnegie Mellon. I'm an electrical and computer engineering major. I'm also majoring in engineering and public policy and uh, minoring in robotics. Cool. Um, do you know how to code? Yeah. You can write software? Yeah. What's your favorite language? Uh, C. C? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's your best thing you ever worked on? Uh, so Carnegie Mellon, we're competing in the Google Lunar X Prize Challenge. So basically what we're doing is we're sending a robot to the moon to send back HD photo and video. And I worked on the FPGA-based uh, locomotion systems. All right, cool. cool. I'm John Furrier. I'm here with SiliconAngle.com. We're here with the young guns, the future generation. I mean, hell, the space shuttle just landed its final mission. This guy's a robotics geek. Dude, how do you feel about that? Come on. I mean, you got to get the NASA working on some cool shit. What's going on? Yeah, it looks like NASA. I uh, don't know if the future's in NASA, but at least it's moving more private institutions. I know other companies are coming up, like SpaceX and stuff like that. So. Good to see the research going, moving to the private sector a little bit. Melvin, let me ask you a question. You're a young gun. You're here sure. at Cloud Air. These guys are the Super Brain Trust. Silicon Valley top interns are here. What's your vision of the future? What do you see possible that's different? I mean, I'm old. I'm 45. <laughs> I mean, shit, they had black and white TVs when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, there's no cable. There was no internet when I was in college. Yeah, there's yeah. no texting. <laughs> I mean, what do you see is really big change happening? What do you see happening? Uh, definitely, I see uh, maybe... 
robots taking over more. I know I see it now in the Prius. They have all the stuff like lane assist. The robots are parking for you and all that stuff. So whatever, anything a robot can do to make your task easier. Looking for, looking for that. What about, what about augmented reality? What about software? Any cool, like, new sunglasses come out that have special powers? I mean, come on. What's anything? I'm uh, not too sure about what's coming out on the software side. I mean, I know a little bit they're having... You know, Verilog's moving more to like system Verilog, but that's all I keep up with, how to make Verilog easier. So describe the scene here for people that aren't here. What are you, what are you seeing out there in Cloudera? Describe the scene here for the uh, folks that are not, not here. Oh yeah, so it's, uh, it's uh, a bunch of young interns, uh, video games everywhere, there's snacks everywhere, and people are just uh, socializing. Yeah. What's, what do you, what's your story? What do you want to do when you graduate? Any ideas? Uh, I'm not too sure yet, so I'm an ECE major, so that's both hardware and software. But definitely, I like to move into something robotics field, definitely. College fun for you? Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> I know on. it's the most fun thing It doesn't in the world, stop, man. College is your best time of your life. <laughs> Enjoy it. So I've heard, so I've heard. But uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work at CMU, a lot of, lot of all-nighters, a lot of uh, endless nights, long nights. So. It's a good program. Carnegie yeah. Mellon's got a great... I interviewed Greg Gander at uh, VMworld last year. Uh, they're doing all kinds of cool cloud stuff, good papers. Mm -hmm. um, what's the what's your favorite thing outside of robotics in the in the in the in the world in the that's wor changing? What do you uh, see? I love I love basketball. I love sports. I love basketball. Yeah. So I know it's a little sad era now that you know football's on strike, the NFL's on strike, the NBA's on strike. But uh, hopefully they'll get together, so I won't be bored this uh, fall. How do you get your news? How do you get uh, information? Uh, mostly uh, just you know my homepage is ESPN.com. I watch SportsCenter. Um, every now and then I'll tune into CS CNN, but uh, mostly uh, SportsCenter is my uh, main source. Um, um, no. Do you read the paper? Uh, no, I used to in high school. I used to take the subway all the time in New York, and so I used to read the paper on the subway ride, but uh, not anymore. How about learning? Is school helping you, or you learn from the web? Uh, a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Uh, some of the, the more technical classes, seems he's got some great professors, helps there, but some of the other classes, uh, you know, you learn on your own. All right, cool. Well, uh, Melvin, thanks for coming in to the SiliconAngle.tv. Check out SiliconAngle.com. Tell all your friends. It's a cult website in, out here in Silicon Valley. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks. we're going to go back to the scene here, the Cloudera scene. There it is. That's Melvin from Carnegie Mellon. Did a good job. You had uh, 31 people watching. Uh, okay. I just couldn't even
going to be like a learning knowledge. The problem with the education is not about courses, it's about knowledge. Okay. I want to learn about algorithms. Oh, okay, okay. Think that, it's okay. like a Wikipedia video for knowledge. Oh. But yeah. you bring in people. Okay. So imagine you're so you bring in like experts or stuff, or just people? Well.
We're here at the Cloudera Intern Party, SiliconAngle.com, Silicon Academy. This party is brought to you by Silicon Academy, and we're here with AJ. Tell us your name and where you're from, what school you go to. Right. So I'm AJ Drapathi. Uh, I'm from uh, Milpitas, California, and uh, I, go to, uh, I go to UC Berkeley. What are you studying? Hacking and hustling. <laughs> uh, so a double major, yeah. business and computer science. No, no, no. Yeah. Actually, just electrical engineering, computer science. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, hacking and hustling hacking is and what hustling. I like to cool. call it. So what you, tell people the vibe here. What's like a cloud air? What's the scene? Uh, I really like the office here. It's very open. Um, there's a lot of people hanging out, eating food, having yeah. a good time. I like cool. it. I think all. I think this is actually the best recruiting strategy I've ever seen. Why? All kinds of toys. It's a party, yeah. Yeah, toys, toys party, uh, video games. Ch chatting with the CEO, you know. Yeah, he's a cool guy, yeah. Mike Olson. Very experienced, and he's Berkeley guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that, right? Yeah, he just he told me. Yeah. We, had a, we had a chat. He worked on a Berkeley DB, I think. But for some reason, Cloud Air has got this Brown guys going on. They got, you know, two guys from Brown University. Yeah. Tom Sai guys there. They got another intern from Brown. Right, uh, David. Right. Yeah, they got to up their Trejo. game. Get some Berkeley guys in there. Yeah. Right. Ross? Well, okay, David Ross is actually me. originally from Berkeley, I think. Who? David. Is I he? mean, he grew up in Berkeley. He did. Okay. So what's your story? I mean, where are you from? You know, what's your interest? What do you think of the future? I mean, how old are you? 19. 19? Yeah. I mean, hell, I'm 45. We had <laughs> black and white TVs back in the day when I was growing up. I'm John Furrier. I'm here with the interns, the future of the, the world. Tell I mean, us, what's, the, what's your future look like? Yeah, I think, I think the future is, um, you know, on the cloud, like as much of a buzzword as it is nowadays, right? I think, um, I think the you know sort of the old days of hardware are, are coming to an end, in in terms of like you actually owning big amounts of hardware. Like I think that's that's like somebody else's problem right now. So I think like uh, operating systems on the cloud, uh, storage on the cloud, uh, things like that. That's why I'm excited to be here at. Cloudera, uh, you know. It's a game changer. I mean, it's very disruptive. I mean, for example, do you read the paper? I'm sorry, what? Do you read the newspaper? No, I only read Hacker News. Only Hacker? Well, that's online. That's not a newspaper. <laughs> yeah, it's um, not a newspaper. Do you read, like, the New York Times, Wall no. Street Journal? No. No, of course I read, not. I read Reddit 19. and Hacker News. That's it. Yeah, and SiliconAngle.com now. Don't forget that. And what? SiliconAngle.com. Well, when you, when you guys show up on Hacker News. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is, which is pretty often. Well, we've been on there. Yeah, yeah we've been definitely. on there. I mean, we got to get we got to up, up our tech game, but Silicon Academy, our new site, is going to be rocking and rolling with a lot of comp sci uh, content. So we're going to look for that. We're going to be doing Hadoop TV. Have some fun. Um, What's your buddy Ross's story here? What's what's his deal? So Ross is Ross is my housemate at Berkeley. Yeah. Um, is Berkeley crazy? I mean, the Carnegie Mellon guys are like, ah, you know, they live, it's Pittsburgh. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's not Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley's crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the homeless people are are very. They add like a character that you're not going to really see anywhere else. <laughs> Party's rocking here. Pan the camera. Hey Ross, can you do me a favor? Can you pan the camera around? Can you pan that camera around? So we're gonna have Ross uh, pan the camera around. He's the guy behind me. You can see him in my in my shot here. I'm John Furrier. I'm SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv founder, and we're here oh, so at, at the so Cloud Air party. So you, I actually read about your your uh, what you're doing on Hacker News, um, but I forgot what it was. Uh, what 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 are you doing? SiliconAngle.com. No, no, what Silicon Cloud Academy. TV? Cloud TV. Uh, Hadoop TV. Hadoop TV. HadoopTV.com. We're gonna launch that yeah, with well, Cloud Era. That's coming soon, um, and we're gonna do that. IBM may kick in. So, um, is it is it like a is it like a tech chat about about it's, the? It's gonna be a pure, non-commercial focus around um, tech and Hadoop Apache. Very the PBS, the C-SPAN for Apache Hadoop, and really okay. focus in on the you know the real innovations, computer science. So so kind of like, kind of like a visual. Hacker News, yeah. similar content. With, yeah, but but showcasing people like you know, your interview here, right? You look good. You're young gun. You know, we want to have really candid. It's like sports, right? Yeah. It's like you know, shoot, 
it's like tech shop. Yeah, you know? no, that's exactly it, it's right? It's not like, like CNN or right. CNBC, none right, of that like bullshit. The, the, the heroes in Silicon Valley now aren't like uh, sports players. You know, they're like they're like Zuck. Tech athletes. We call them tech athletes. Tech athletes. That's a better word. I mean, like, we like, just had, uh, like I was Zuck or Paige or, or whoever it is. Richard McIniff. I was just broadcasting oh, live. Yeah. He's a legend. Um, we had, a, you know, Steve Harris, CTO. And you know, and it could be also Mike Olson's a tech athlete, and you know he's a CEO at a whole nother level. So business athlete, you got tech athletes, yeah. And so you got some cool people. So the goal of SiliconAngle.tv, Silicon Academy, is to highlight the knowledge and the people behind it. Right. And it's it's in depth. It's not just a feature. I'm on, sorry, I didn't catch that. It's, it's in depth. Okay. It's not just some feature on some program. Yeah. And yeah. it's done. Right. It's and all the time. A lot of the writers uh, for like Forbes or whatever. I mean, not not the best. They're not tech, they're not technologists themselves, or maybe they are, but they're yeah. not. They're not geeks. They're not geeks. They're not hackers. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't come to like a geek <laughs> party. Yeah. Uh, in the we evenings. we call ourselves hacker journalism. Hacker so, journalism, yeah. Because because there's enough data in the marketplace to for people to make up their own minds and share groups. Yeah, right. I mean, the idea that the idea that. Uh, in the old days, the New York Times, a writer was doing the service for the users who weren't informed because yeah. they didn't have access to information. So the writer's job was to pretend that they were their friends or act like a steward to, to be independent and be justice. Right. Now, look at peer groups. They can talk to themselves. Hey, did you see that story on New York Times? Yeah, it's complete bullshit. Hey, you see Silicon Angle? Oh, yeah, great story. They got it right, and they add to it. Yeah. So we are very participatory. Right, and I think, I think even more than that, like a good publicity... Is like is key to any sort of like angel or you know venture capitalist or even you know entrepreneurs. So I think yeah. I think you can really provide like a like a service. Yeah. Well, you know we we publish for free. We don't want to charge people. Yeah. So the data we get we make money from data. So we have a whole big Hadoop team and data science team. So we publish for free, and we have a research arm called Wikibon.org, ex Gartner IDC analysts, and they publish for free. So we provide free content, and the free content gets rewarded because the users love it, and we just get the interaction data, and we make sense out of that and sell it. Yeah. So it's data-driven business. So you want to get in there, Ross? No? You so, shy? You know, if you're looking for someone to do interviews, please consider me. You're good. I mean, <laughs> what do you think about Facebook chat and the Skype thing? Good deal? Um, it's definitely not as cool as Google Hangout. Let me tell you a story about Google Hangout really quick before Ross gets in. So... Um, I, I, I just stumbled upon a Google Hangout with my friends, right? And my friend had act was driving down I-5 with his Android Tether. And I was chatting with him while he was driving down I-5 with a tethered Android. And my other friend in Berkeley. And I was in, I was in uh, the South Bay, Milpitas, San Jose. So, so that's, you know, that's three people having a conference. Um, driving from totally different places and yeah. I think it's moving great. too at what? high speed and moving at high yeah, speed yeah moving at high speed I think I think that's the future I don't think one one on one chat isn't it's it's okay but I don't think it's really an answer in to 2002 to put it in perspective I was on um, doing some pre Wi-Fi extended Wi-Fi development and we were driving down 17 near uh, Campbell with, from a tower we had a special antenna and we were like had a laptop open with it and uh, over amplified PCMCA antenna, and we were getting pings. Like, we were getting pings, it's coming back, and then it would go away, it'd come back. I mean, look how far it's come in eight years. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's just ping data. That's not sustained network connection. So if you think about it, tethering while driving to LA or Vegas, talking to another guy, the mobile revolution is here. Cloud and mobile, I mean. Yeah, mobile and cloud. That's the future. So, I, I, I mean, agree. hell. Yeah. Now, yeah, to me, thanks for thanks for having me. To me, I, I what I'm working on right now. I'll show a screenshot. Is uh, Silicon Academy. So, so what I'm trying to do is build a site that is completely non-linear learning, meaning topic-based. So Khan Academy for higher education, completely data-driven. It's not linear courseware. It's just knowledge-based, tied into social networks. Where if you get stuck in a problem. You can go to like five gurus. It could be a Cloud Air employee. It could be someone else. I'm in India. You say, hey, I just need a quick question. Leave a, leave a comment on their tweet, blog. They get back to you. Response rates around, depending on how fast they get around, minutes to maybe a day. So imagine, a, imagine how boring school is. I mean, 
with the web, with all that data, do you find school boring? Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, except I for the good classes, the high end classes. Right, right, right. And so some of it, you know, is like eating your vegetables, right? Like the math. You gotta, you gotta know that stuff. But you know, the hacking is where it's at. I think. What about high school? High school is terribly boring. I mean, yeah. kids are playing Xbox. They're consuming data at a massive rate. Their brains are on fire. It's sucking in Facebook, BitTorrent, Pirate Bay, iTunes, five zillion windows open, and they're reading a book, Mice and Men. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. I mean, it's like molasses. Yeah. So the web is going to change that. So, you know, school won't change, but these new sites will. So I'm doing Silicon Academy. That's a plug out there for, uh, for my site, Silicon Academy. It's in closed beta, which means that it's not developed. Yeah, so go to Khan, you know Khan Academy? So it's like Khan Academy for higher ed. We're going to start with computer science, um, education, really more topic-based. I want to learn a uh, database locking algorithm. I see. Yeah. Uh, over, you know, semaphores, all kinds of stuff like that. So Yeah, so not, not class-based, but like... It's a snippet. Gotcha. So Khan Academy is cool. I want to learn how to solve the quadratic equation. I'm a 13-year-old. Or I'm a, I'm a 6-year-old. So it, to me... I'm agnostic on who you are, where you are. If you want to know, that's what's great about Khan. If you want to learn how to solve a polynomial, he's got a quick lesson on that. And you get it done and get out. Same thing for higher ed, except you add a people element to it. So we're going to do that. Like, say, you want to learn how to learn Hadoop. I've got Tom White's book right here. Yeah. A lot of great lessons in there. A lot of people want to contribute a snippet here, snippet there. So aggregate that and then, you know, bring in the college courseware. You know, you want to watch the Stanford lectures? Great, they're available. But when you start to get into like, hey, I just want to spin up an EC2 instance. How do I do that again? I'm not a Unix guru. I need, what's command line? So you pop into a video. Okay, cool. All right, I want to set up a web server and some MySQL. Great. Right, so what you're saying is that Khan Academy hasn't like changed the model of the, of like, of schooling and schooling is boring unless you're learning something interesting. Khan Academy solved the linear problem, which is in school, when someone gets stuck, they get labeled a dunce. Right. When in reality, what Khan has proven is when people break through that stuckness, they accelerate. Yeah. They actually accelerate. So what Khan has proven with data is that when they break through a lesson, they take a completely different vector than what linearly would be laid out for them on a normal path. But in school, that child gets actually stunted. They get put into a different track and slowed down. So what online, you can have these lessons and do at your own pace. Now, what Khan's not doing is he's not going higher ed and he doesn't bring in a people perspective. So imagine, um, I'll give me an example. Imagine if you're at Berkeley, you guys are doing your thing, partying away, coding away. You get this epiphany, kind of like a Mark Zuckerberg moment in social network. You're banging out code and all of a sudden you're stuck and you want to call Mike Olson up at home. I'm sorry, what? Call, you want to call Mike Olson up at home or right. call me up at home or someone else who's a guru. You can do that with my, with my network. Because so, they're online. You could, are, they chat, are they available on chat? Can you, can you leave them a message real quick? Out of, out of, you know, asynchronously. You, know. you can't call Mike Olson at home, but in the old days, you had to call him up at home. That's personal. Ask someone for an introduction. I mean, look at LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Hey, can you pass on this request? I'm trying to find so and so. I laugh at that. I mean, who sends that? That takes like forever. That's like the mail. Have you ever seen people say, "Hey, can you forward this over on LinkedIn?" No, you're too young. You don't use LinkedIn. I you know, like, <laughs> occasionally use LinkedIn. Yeah, but, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, oh, you're connected to someone. Yeah, I'm connected to 1,500 people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, hey, John, can you send Mark Andreessen this email? I'm trying to get a. I want to try to get a meeting with him. Like, oh, Mark Andreessen, or hey, you know. So it's so it's like it's social con for hackers. Yeah, and, and well, using data, right? Using so you data. It, okay. if you use data and social, you add more content, right? So production, you get you get video submissions, and just I mean, video is hot right now. I think you know I'm looking at we do a whole lot of research on video, so we research video consumption patterns, video usage. With uh, Logitech just announced an under 1,000 HD unit right now. That's so awesome that. Literally, the surveillance market of vid raw video, counterterrorism, and all over the world, they're pulling in video feeds like you read about. It's a big data problem. It's a discovery problem. So, 
I mean, if you're at Berkeley, you want to, in my community, like Hacker News and Reddit, submit something. Yeah. And you submit it in, you're on the roster, you know, hang out, meet people. So that, that's the kind of thing, so. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it was great. It was great talking to you. Have you got a card? Um, yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to go back and check out the scene. Uh, Ross, you kind of screwed up the camera. Oh, okay. Look at that. All right, let's get the camera fixed. Right
work and innovation go. Whenever you see this type of dynamic change at every single layer of the stack, there's tremendous opportunity for everyone. In fact, it's not really VMware by ourselves. It is VMware as uh, a part of this entire industry uh, that things are changing. And, and as Paul said in his keynote, uh, this is tide that's coming in. This isn't really us. This is something that yeah, yeah. we're all participating so in. You're an enabler of it. You guys are, virtualization is an enabler. Right? Well, virtualization is, you know, in some senses, uh, the cloud and virtualization are almost two sides of the same coin. Yeah. Uh, in some senses, you know, we know how to virtualize and you know how to cloud, build a cloud. Uh, and it really depends in many ways where you are on that virtualization journey. Uh, customers who are just starting, they're on one side. Customers who have really a virtualization first policy, uh, they're on the other side. They're building clouds themselves. Kind of like kindergarten, elementary school. It's all continuum. Yeah. <laughs>